Welcome back to our midweek special series. This is part four, making it the last one. So I thought we would compare the famous German trio, the Audi RS5, Mercedes C63, and BMW M4. Now, I'm sure you've seen plenty of track reviews on these cars, but how do they compare on bumpy British roads? And is there a definitive winner? My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. So the keen-eyed amongst you will have spotted that this is a C63S, not a regular C63. Yeah, sorry, we've just got to work with what we've got, I'm afraid. That does make it the most expensive though, so keep that in mind during this comparison. Anyway, video overview. Today we're going to see which car is the most fun, then the most practical, the fastest on our 30 to 70 leaderboard, which is best on a long journey, and which is best in the twisties. The winner of each category will get three points, second obviously gets two, and third gets one. Got it? Okay, let's get into it, and firstly, find out which one is the most fun. Now for me, this was actually a fairly easy decision, and it was the C63S. But the BMW is a pure driving machine with unbeatable dynamics, blah blah blah. Don't worry guys, the M4 will have its say later. Anyway, why the C63? Well, to best explain it, let's rule out why I didn't choose the other two first. The RS5 sounded surprisingly good, like genuinely, it's a pretty good engine this, but sadly it just about lacked everywhere else. It needs just a bit more dynamism on the rear axle, and I really want to be able to drive it on the throttle a bit. Plus the steering, while sharp, lacked a lot of involvement, and didn't really feel that different to the regular Audi A5 I reviewed a while ago. Link to that video in the top right hand corner. Now the M4, it is fun, don't get me wrong, but I'm a guy that likes to turn most of the driver aids off. The problem is, when you do that in the M4, you better have your wits about you, or before you know it, you're sideways into a tree. The chassis is sharp, but the powertrain is a tad spiky. Let me show you what I mean. Like, if it wasn't wet, you could probably go around this corner at 50. And that is why I chose the C63 over the M4. You see, whilst the M4 is indeed fun, the C63 provides something slightly different. Easy fun. It holds your hand just a little bit more than the M4, and it just makes you giggle. That thunderclap of the exhaust combined with the squiggly rear end just brings ear to ear smiles irrespective of your speed. So the scores then, the C63S comes first in this category, giving it 3 points, the M4 second, so 2 points, and the RS5 comes last with just 1 point. Moving on then to the most practical, this was actually closer than you might think, well between the RS5 and M4 at least. The C63 is abysmal for rear passengers and boot space, putting it a big fat last in this comparison. The M4 has 440 litres of boot space to the RS5's 450, but the opening on the RS5 is much squarer, making it easier to get larger items in. Surprisingly though, the BMW has a tad more legroom in the rear compared to the RS5. But there's just a couple more features in the Audi, namely your own climate control and an armrest as standard. That means the Audi just takes the BMW in terms of practicality. So what are the scores on the doors? Well the C63S gets 1 point, giving it a total of 4 points so far. The M4 gets 2 points, also bringing it to 4 points overall. And funnily enough the RS5 gets 3 points, bringing it to, you guessed it, 4 points. I think I see a theme developing here. Now then, who's the quickest? Each car did three runs on exactly the same bit of tarmac. The only difference was the conditions. The C63S's run was done in a bit of wet weather, but the RS5 and M4 were both pretty much dry runs. Let's see the RS5 first. Well, how did we do? We managed dead on 3.5 seconds. Whether that's fast or not, we don't know yet, but it certainly felt quick. Now let's see that M4 in action. So the quickest run I managed was 3.52 seconds, and to do that I used MDM mode, as with the traction control on, it was just completely cutting the power. 
In perfect conditions, it would probably just about beat the RS5, but this is a realistic test, so the RS5 takes it. Right, let's see if an AMG in the wet can beat that RS5. Well, despite the traction issues, this thing still flew to 70 in just 3.45 seconds, putting it first in this category. That V8 really is something else. Although, it should be really, considering it's got a fair bit more power than the other cars. The scores then, while well, the RS5 gets 2 points, giving it 6 points in total, the M4 gets 1 point, putting it last with just 5 points, then the C63S gets 3 points, putting it first so far with 7 points. Enough about performance figures then. What's the car you want on those long, boring motorway journeys? Well, for me, there is a clear winner in this category, and that is the Audi RS5. Let's list off the reasons. It's got the quietest cabin, the seats come with a massage function as standard, the steering is lighter than the other two cars, it has the best sound system, only just though, the suspension is the most supple, but most surprisingly it was by far the most efficient. The M4 and C63 only just got over 30 mpg, whereas the RS5 managed a frankly staggering 42 miles per gallon. This was all done on the same bit of M25, in similar traffic conditions as well. So how on earth did that RS5 manage it? Well, it's got one extra gear over the M4, and it's the most aerodynamic of the three. So A, it sits at a lower RPM, and B, it slices through the air like a hot knife through butter. All that means better fuel economy, and most importantly, less stops at extraordinarily priced motorway petrol stations. Okay, what's the scores now then? The M4 comes second due to slightly better fuel economy, giving it two points. The C63S of course comes last, so it gets one point. Then the RS5 comes first with three points. That means the M4 has seven points, the C63 has eight points, and the RS5 is now in the lead with nine points. Now, our final test. What's the best car for twisty roads? Well, they're all different. The Audi is like a train, it just kind of sticks and sticks and sticks. The Mercedes is like a pit bull on a slick surface. Hilarious, but certainly not the most dynamic. The M4 is the gymnast. One wrong move and it's a bye-bye time. But get it right and you're untouchable. The way this BMW holds the road is just on a different level compared to the other two. And on a track, or even an open B road, it would just walk away. So the BMW wins in this category, but what's the final tally? Well, the RS5 gets one point because the C63 is just a tad more dynamic. Of course, that means the C63 then gets two points, and of course, the M4 gets three points. And funnily enough, that means all three cars end up with exactly ten points each. And you know what? I think that perfectly sums up these cars. They're equal, but better than each other in different ways. People love to fanboy over certain cars, but at the end of the day, it really is just preference. And if you're a driving enthusiast, you should aspire to own all three. The Audi is the road trip king, the Mercedes the ego booster, and the M4 is the master sensei. Lower numbers on paper, but ready to serve you the most humblest slice of pie at any moment. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like and why not subscribe? There's not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale. My name's Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.